for attending. Uh, my name is Melina Lodge. I'm the executive director of the Housing Network of Rhode Island. Um, and we are the Association of Community Development Corporations and nonprofit developers from across the state of Rhode Island um, who build and support affordable housing for low and moderate income Rhode Islanders. And we support our members through advocating for policies and programs and resources like this housing bond that enable those developments to become homes for real Rhode Islanders. We also serve as the backbone organization for Homes RI, which is a collective impact coalition comprised of over 80 organizations and 300 individuals who have a shared vision that all Rhode Islanders should have safe, healthy, affordable homes. Uh, first off, I'd like to acknowledge and thank the governor and the Department of Housing for their historic investment of $321.5 million in state reco uh, fiscal recovery funds over the last two years, and for their continued recognition of the importance of housing investment uh, with their introduction of the $100 million housing bond in FY25, which will be heard tonight in House Finance. Building upon those investments, as well as capitalizing on the new opportunities for increased housing production that we think will be generated by the series of legislative zoning and land use policy reform measures that were passed by the General Assembly last session under Speaker Sikarchi's leadership. We are here advocating for an increase of $50 million to that $100 million to bring us to a $150 million housing bond. That's right. Money, money. We know that housing costs both for rental and homes for sale continue to surge and are out of reach for approximately half of Rhode Island households. We know there are record numbers of developments and homes in pipeline to be built with the most recent round of funding from Rhode Island Housing receiving $3 in requests for every dollar available. That means there will be real projects and real homes that do not move forward because we simply don't have the resources to make them happen. I'd like to acknowledge the legislators that were able to join us today and for their continued leadership um, on housing. Chairman uh, Casey, Chairwoman Donovan, Representative Carson, Representative Boylan, uh, Representative Portrevend, and Senator, the only Senator, thank you, uh, Ujifusa. Um, we are very grateful to have really wonderful, thoughtful, dedicated partners in this work. I think for those po folks who are, you know, paying attention to the housing space, there are a lot of bodies uh, who do really important pieces of the work. Collectively, we do this together. There is no organization that does this work alone, and, and we are beyond proud uh, to have those folks as part of our Homes RI coalition and to work with them every day to advance this agenda. So um, you're going to hear from a number of those partners today. Uh, Treasurer Diosa, Representative uh, June Speakman, who is the chairwoman of the Housing Affordability Commission, who I also failed to acknowledge. Sorry, June. You <laughs> uh, put on my list otherwise. Uh, Rhonda Mitchell, Executive Director of the Newport Housing Authority. Colin Penny, Executive Director of South County Habitat for Humanity. Kim Simmons, the Interim Executive Director of the Rhode Island Coalition to End Homelessness, and Wendy Sanchez, the Resident Services Manager for One Neighborhood Builders. And you're going to hear from these folks. These are all folks working on the ground with real clients and real people who need housing. Uh, I'd also like to welcome Chairman Abney to the room, and I see Lynn or Bonnie from the Speaker's Office as well. If I missed anybody else, my apologies. Um, so with that being said, I'll turn over the agenda to the more important folks. Uh, and I am very pleased to welcome to the mic our wonderful partner and colleague and true champion for housing, Treasurer Diosa. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for the kind words and good afternoon. I am proud to stand with all of you to call attention to one of the greatest challenges of our fit that's facing our state today. We are here because we all agree that housing affordability has reached crisis levels for many Rhode Islanders across our 39 cities and towns. Whether you dream of becoming a homeowner or simply hope to afford rent each month, 
we need to do more to ensure that all Rhode Islanders have access to quality, affordable homes. A 2016 report commissioned by Rhode Island Housing indicated that the state had had to add roughly 40,000 housing units over the next decade, decade just to meet population demands. That was nearly a decade ago. Yet so far, only about half of those units have been added. I know that many of you have been laser focused on this issue. I want to thank the many leaders and organizational partners working hard to solve this challenge in our state. And I want to specifically thank Speaker Chikachi for his leadership on this issue. <laughs> Last year, the governor signed into law a package of 13 bills championed by the speaker aimed at housing production and land use reform, along with June Speakman. It is important to also recognize and acknowledge the leadership role that the governor has played in funding housing production at unprecedented levels since becoming governor. These are historical leaps forward for Rhode Island. But now it's time to continue to build on that momentum. And that's why I think there's an opportunity here to go big, you know, $50 million more big to continue the housing production for all Rhode Islanders. Putting a housing production bond on the ballot in November, increasing available housing stock, creating more affordable housing opportunities, provide more support for those experiencing homelessness, and there's a lot of talent in this room today, and I am confident that we can solve this challenge and ensure that all Rhode Islanders have an access to a quality and affordable home. Thank you all, and let's get this done. Thank you. And it's my pleasure to introduce Representative June Speakman. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to my colleagues in government, Chairman Casey, who shepherds much of this legislation through the Housing Municipal Government Committee, my colleagues from the East Bay, uh, who are always with me. Thank you very much. I think I saw Representative Handy, he's behind the easel there, and again, several other <laughs> colleagues in the House and Senate. Thank you again. And I see here in front of me so many, hi, so many folks who have worked with me over the years. Before I got this gig, I was doing other things in housing, uh, so many advocates, developers, um, public housing authority executives um, who have worked for years and years on this effort. We are finally at the state level helping you out a little bit with some, uh, we've created a whole bureaucracy for you, we're always good news, um, and, and pushed a lot of money into this effort, which we are going to start seeing produce units, I'm sure. This idea that it takes three years to get from the initial idea to the actually uh, heads on beds, as Jen Hawkins has taught me to say, um, is disheartening, but I guess it is what it is. And so we need to keep up with this effort. And in order to keep fueling this effort, we need the dollars. So I very much appreciate the governor putting the bond in the budget, and I very much appreciate the consideration of adding $50 million to that, as the treasurer suggested, and urge you all to support that. We've got a lot of work to do. Money helps, but all the hard work that all of you do is essential to making it all work. So thank you very much. And on to Rhonda Mitchell. Your turn. Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here with us today. Uh, as we're hearing, the housing affordability crisis in Rhode Island is undeniable. And just at the Newport Housing Authority alone, we have more than 10,000 applicants on our waiting list for housing. And given that we have fewer than 50 apartments or vouchers that become available to us in any given year, it would take us 200 years just to address that current need. And this is not unique to Newport, of course. The problem is throughout our state. And according to Housing Works for Rhode Island, which I'm a proud member of the board, um, there's not a single city or town in the state of Rhode Island where a, a full-time worker earning minimum wage can afford to live. And for Rhode Island's median income uh, renters, there's only one city or town in the state of Rhode Island 
where they could affordably rent, and that's in Boroughville. So the good news is that Rhode Island is working to address this issue. Rhode Island does recognize that housing preservation and production are vital in our strategy, and Rhode Island has made historic investments in housing, especially in recent years since the pandemic. And we're thankful to the governor and our legislature for this work. And as a result of these investments, I want to share how those funds have impacted us in Newport. We've received more than eight and a half million dollars in building home Rhode Island funds that have allowed us to preserve a 262 unit affordable housing property, Park Home, that's more than 80 years old, severely distressed, and it has to be demolished and completely rebuilt in stages. But these funds have allowed us to do that. And more than a decade ago, we received other bond dollars that allowed us to preserve another 400 units in Newport, our former Tonomy Hill site. And we have replaced each and every unit that we've lost, either through on-site units or through vouchers. The bond dollars work. Using these critical housing funds, in addition to other public and private funds, we've not only been able to build quality, affordable homes for Rhode Islanders, but we have completely transformed and revitalized the highest poverty neighborhood in Newport. And these vital housing investments have even spurred other economic development. And I'm speaking just in Newport. We've got the CCRI Newport campus, the East Bay Community Action Program's new Community and Health Center, the Paul Crowley East Bay Met School, our citywide Pell Elementary School, and recently, Bike Newport's Big Blue Bike Barn, all centered either on our housing campus or within just a few short blocks of our property. And in addition to that, it's also brought new and returning community enrichment programs that help to improve the quality of life of our families. We have an on-site health equity zone. We offer GED and ESL programs, workforce development programs. We have the Boys and Girls Club on site for youth enrichment programs. We now have community gardens and a healthy food ecosystem with partners like a Quidnick Community Table, offering farmers markets in Newports right next door to our housing property in Park Home. And we even have Fab Newport with tech space, maker space, and now tomorrow we'll have a kickoff for the Fab Golf Program. So again, these housing investments work. We want all Rhode Islanders to live in affordable, sustainable, and thriving communities. But instead, the reality is nearly half of Rhode Islanders are housing insecure because of these housing cost burdens. So we're at a point where the housing crisis has reached catastrophic levels, especially for some of our lower income earners. And again, I have to come back to full-time workers earning minimum wage or Rhode Island median income. So I stand here before you today asking Rhode Island to take bold, equitable, and aggressive action by increasing the proposed housing bond from $100 million to $150 million and to ensure housing affordability for our lowest income Rhode Islanders. Thank you all. Good afternoon. My name is Colin Penny and I'm the Executive Director of South County Habitat for Humanity. For a number of years, South County Habitat for Humanity has been able to utilize the Building Homes Rhode Island program in the state affordable housing bond funds to create home ownership opportunities for hardworking Rhode Islanders. Our program utilizes dozens of community partners and tens of thousands of volunteer hours to help us build and sell homes to, to Rhode Island residents who are in need of a hand up, not a handout. All of our home buyers are at or below 80% of the area median income, which means that we are selling homes to folks in your community who are the teachers, the bank tellers, the road workers, the town clerks, and the managers at your favorite restaurants. Before we had access the bond funds, South County Habitat was building one house 
every other year with our volunteers. A great accomplishment, but not nearly enough. Today, we are selling five homes a year and have an amb ambitious plan to build 22 homes in two years in the town of Was Westerly. None of this would be possible without previous investments in affordable housing through the bonds. At a time when home ownership is nearly out of reach for generations of Rhode Islanders, when construction costs are rising and the access to buildable land is becoming more and more difficult, it is not a time to pull away, but a time to invest more. This is why South County Habitat for Humanity is asking all of you, all of our representatives, the administration, and hopefully all the voters in Rhode Island to support $150 million investment in affordable housing so that we can do the hard work to ensure that every Rhode Islander has a safe, decent, and affordable place to call home. Thank you. everyone good afternoon what a great turnout I'm excited to see so many of my colleagues and elected officials and other housing advocates here today thank you to the Housing Network of Rhode Island for bringing us all together around a critical issue facing our state the governor's recently proposed dollars for the housing bond we're glad to see that the governor has certainly proposed the largest bond that Rhode Island has ever seen, $100 million. However, not all of those funds are proposed to be used for affordable housing production, and those of us that have been in this work and know what the reality is in terms of need also realize that $100 million just isn't enough to be able to meet the myriad of housing challenges in our current housing crisis. We have weaknesses and substantial gaps in the Ocean State's housing system, more than we have had for decades. Contributing to this remarkable state of affairs is that today's rental market is grossly unaffordable. The current 2023 housing fact book by Housing Works shows that a household needs an income of more than $100,000 in 38 out of 39 municipalities. Nearly half of all renters spend more than 30% of their income on housing. Unfortunately, the problem seems to be worsening in the last year. Home prices in Rhode Island have increased 7.5%, and rents have skyrocketed with Providence reportedly having the highest rent increase nationwide. We're seeing rising levels of unsheltered Rhode Islanders in recent months. Many unhoused residents say that they used to live in an apartment, but due to rising rents, they cannot afford an apartment in today's market. Rhode Island's housing affordability problem has resulted primarily from a lack of housing production over quite a long period of time. Historically, Rhode Island has invested relatively little state funding toward affordable housing compared to, uh, compared to other New England states significantly lower than its neighbors, Connecticut and Massachusetts. In comparison, for example, from my home state of Massachusetts, $800 million was their housing bond. It is a huge difference. The current housing market is not sufficient to meet the demand. Rhode Island housing officials recently estimated that the state needs to build an average between 2,200 and 3,087 new housing units each year to maintain the status quo. However, these numbers do not necessarily improve housing affordability. High housing costs are exacerbating our homeless system, and despite increased shelter beds and emergency shelter options, which we're grateful for, we are still not meeting the demand. Rhode Islanders experiencing homelessness, are staying in shelters or staying unsheltered longer due to a lack of permanent housing supply. In particular, we know that funding to support our subsidized housing for extremely low income and low income families will help alleviate the impact to the already overly taxed homelessness system. More affordable housing options mean we can move people up the ladder 
exiting shelter status to housing. This means we can reduce the number of households living outside, thus saving lives and building community. Housing has a trickle-down effect where it supports our economics and reducing health care costs, provides more revenue for local cities and towns, and allows our communities to thrive by helping our, our neighbors. So we believe that $100 million is just not enough to support actual housing affordability. And again, while $100 million is a good start, more money will be needed to truly change the trajectory in homelessness and the trends that we have seen over the past few years. While the $150 million housing bond that we are proposing today is still short on what is needed to address all of our affordable housing needs, it will begin the process of moving in the right direction to ensure that all Rhode Islanders are able to reside in safe, healthy, and affordable homes. This is a transformational investment in not only our neighbors, but our communities, our state. Without greater state investment, Rhode Island is unlikely to see much progress. We can do better. So join us in supporting the state in making larger investments in affordable housing. If Rhode Island is going to continue to be a place where people live, work, and raise a family, we need a collective effort to make sure that all Rhode Islanders have an affordable place to live. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wendy Sanchez. I am a Providence resident and a community health care worker and the resident service manager at One Neighborhood Builders. In my role, I work with thousands of families across Rhode Island who rely on affordable housing we provide. My team helps these families get the resources and supports they need to stay in their homes. And while the support we provide is so important to those who have access to it, there are so many Rhode Islanders who still don't have any affordable and safe place to live. Each day, we hear from those community members who are looking for housing. They are often close to the edge of being evicted due to crazy high rents. Or they are homeless and not sure where they will sleep that night. Unfortunately, most of the time, the best we can do is to add them to our wait list and refer them to a homelessness service provider. We just don't have enough apartments to meet the demand. Market rents are too high, even for people working decent jobs sometimes too. Good people trying to navigate all life challenges should not have to spend so much time finding a place to call home or, just, or so much for their income on rent. Affordable housing residents don't fit a mold. And our residents are a diverse group with many different stories to tell. When I think about the residents I work with, I think of a single mother of an adult child with a disability that requires a full-time care. I also think of a family with two adults who are both working full-time but facing the extreme high cost of child care. Some of the kids who are aged out of foster care system are looking for a place to live. We all need a place to call home. It's great to see this group together today advocating for a new investment in affordable housing because we need all we can get. There are so many developments that organizations like One Neighborhood Builders have already built, built but are waiting for funding to do so. That's hundreds, if not thousands, of apartments that Rhode, Island can, Rhode Islanders can call home if, there's, if there was enough funding. I hope my story plays a role in, in making it happen. The people and families I work with every day are counting, counting on us. Thank you, Wendy, for that perspective. I, I can't stress enough how much we really need to focus on the people of Rhode Island. Um, who really desperately need these units. So 
Um, I also wanted to acknowledge some additional legislators who came in, um, as well as uh, elected. Uh, so our good friend and longtime housing champion, uh, Lieutenant Governor Matos. I saw Senator Cazada, uh, Senator Mack, Representative Handy. I don't know if they're still in the room. Uh, Representative Phillips, Representative Bennett. I saw Whip Lawson, but I Lawson, but I believe she had to step out. And Senator Loria. And I think, you know. We attend a lot of press conferences about housing, and I would say this was excellent turnout by the legislature, um, and we very much appreciate your support in this room, and we hope that that will translate into your support in other rooms. Um, and thank you to everyone who came out today. Um, you know, the challenge to you all is tell your friends, uh, tell your friends to tell a friend, call their legislators, and support a $150 million housing bond. Thank you.